Hello everyone, I'm Tomek Porugalski. So before I start, so who in the, uh, in the room uh, has used Kia? Okay, not many, okay. <coughs> That's, so maybe this will be interesting for you. So if you never heard about uh, Kia, so this is a, a modern DHCP uh, V4 and V6 server. Uh, as you know, the old implementation that uh, IC has, IC DHCP, it started over two decades ago, so it's, there is certain uh, lifetime limit how long you can develop software. So uh, we decided a couple of years to start from scratch and uh, this is what uh, Kia uh, really is. So uh, uh, the solution is uh, uh, oriented uh, uh, for performance, for uh, scalability, so we can uh, run uh, millions of devices from a single server. Uh, it's, uh, you, you can uh, update the configuration uh, online. It has tons of features. Uh, there's a couple of aspects that uh, Kia is doing differently than the old implementation, so I'd like to go into a bit more detail uh, uh, of, of those features. So these are the database backends, uh, the hooks, the RESTful uh, API. And uh, Kia is uh, open source, so it runs on uh, lots of different uh, systems. Okay, so let's start with backends. Uh, so Kia has the ability to, uh, to use uh, different databases. Uh, if you want to go small, uh, you can use uh, in-memory database and then store the information in a uh, plain uh, CSV file. Uh, but if you want uh, to go bigger, you can use uh, uh, MySQL or Postgres and we uh, now have support for uh, Cassandra. What's nice about uh, uh, this approach is that uh, Kia does uh, everything on the fly, so you can modify the backend and there's no need to, uh, to notify Kia. It, it will uh, pick up the changes instantly. Okay, so another thing that is uh, uh, quite useful in Kia uh, is the hooks mechanism. So uh, through the uh, uh, packet processing, uh, there are different places when uh, you can install a custom uh, uh, functions that uh, do uh, something uncommon. And this mechanism uh, allow you to uh, tweak uh, the solution to whatever specific needs you have. And of course there are tons of uh, uh, use cases that are common for many people. And this is how uh, we came up with the uh, hook libraries. But uh, I wanted to point out that uh, uh, the, uh, the API it's, uh, uh, it's open, uh, it's uh, well documented, uh, there are examples and uh, IC is not the only uh, company or entity that is uh, developing hooks. There are uh, many, com uh, many companies and even single individuals uh, develop their own hooks. So uh, as you can see, uh, from version to version we uh, keep developing uh, more hooks and uh, they become uh, available, which is, uh, which is uh, released. So uh, soon uh, Kia 1.4 is coming up. Uh, we have uh, a couple new things, uh, high availability. Uh, we can, we'll get uh, reduced support, uh, host caching, and uh, in the future we also get a mechanism to limit uh, certain things. Okay, so <coughs> it's, uh, I'd like to mention that uh, Kia is really scalable. So as a proof, uh, it's uh, 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 the, uh, data centers of Facebook, they are running on Kia. So they use the uh, hooks mechanism extensively. They developed uh, lots of uh, specific features that, uh, that are specific to Facebook. So, and, uh, but underneath there's Kia running. So, okay, so another uh, example of hooks uh, uh, might be Flex ID. So as you know, with the uh, uh, DHCP protocol, uh, you can uh, identify uh, clients uh, using uh, uh, specific uh, uh, identifiers. So that's uh, usually MAC address for uh, V4 and DUID for V6. But there are some cases when people would like to use uh, different uh, uh, identifiers. So, and you know, we, uh, uh, we got the requests uh, for, uh, for different types, we kept implementing them, but after a while uh, people uh, started coming up with, uh, un uh, with uh, uncommon requests, like I'd like to use uh, a, a combination of uh, circuit ID and uh, uh, interface ID, or I want to use the first three bytes of something and then uh, use something else if the second byte is non-zero. 
So, <clears throat> so to address this kind of question, uh, this kind of uh, request, we came up with the, uh, uh, with the concept of uh, flexible ID. So you have uh, an expression, so you can specify what exactly uh, should be used, wh which part of the, uh, of the incoming packets uh, uh, should be used to identify the clients. So it's very easy to use. You just uh, run Wireshark, uh, look at the options and say, okay, I want this and this and part of that. So, <clears throat> okay, uh, so moving on, uh, the next thing that's uh, quite useful in Kia is the uh, REST API mechanism. So if you are familiar with the old ISC DHCP, there was OMAPI interface. You could do certain things with it, but it was very limited and it was also complicated to use. So with Kia, we uh, decided that this is an essential part of the solution. Uh, so uh, we now uh, allow uh, lots of things that uh, previously was, uh, was were not possible. So one, one of the things is that you can uh, get the whole configuration or push the whole configuration. So we, with this, basically everything is uh, possible. But also sometimes, and quite frequent, frequently, you don't want to change everything up, uh, upside down. You just want to, you have, like a thousand subnets configured and you want to add another one. So there's an API for this. And of course, the, the whole API is uh, using JSON format. So it's very easy to use uh, either uh, with the tool that we provided as an example, but you know, this is just JSON, JSON over either Unix socket or HTTP or HTTPS. So you can use uh, any environment to, to generate those. and. Uh, in many deployments, uh, uh, our customers uh, and users, uh, they, they are successful with, uh, with their own uh, implementations. So, okay, so moving on, uh, we'll get uh, uh, 1.4 uh, in May. Uh, so one of the uh, major features that's uh, coming up is uh, high availability. So this is, uh, Rough uh, replacement for uh, DHCP failover, so it's not it's not working exactly like that. It's uh, slightly different, uh, but it covers uh, all the major features. So you can do load balancing with it, uh, <coughs> or uh, use as uh, hot standby. The communication between partners is uh, done over uh, RESTful API, so it's easy to uh, look uh, at uh, what's going on. Of course, as with everything else uh, in Kia. There are hook points, so you can, uh, uh, if you want to tweak something, uh, there, uh, you can either uh, ask us to write an extension for you, or you can write it uh, on your own. Uh, so, uh, okay, so another important aspect is that uh, the solution is for, uh, for uh, V4 and V6. So, uh, okay, so another thing that's uh, coming up is uh, uh, better support for Cassandra. And if you are not familiar with this, uh, Cassandra is uh, a distributed non-relational non-SQL uh, database. So the concept here is that instead of uh, having a, a cluster and you connect to a single point, uh, uh, Kia can connect uh, to uh, all of the nodes uh, in the cluster at the same time. And uh, since Cassandra provides a native uh, uh, redundancy, uh, it depends on uh, how you set it up. It is able to uh, survive uh, certain uh, uh, failures. So uh, with, uh, with HA, uh, you have a f fixed setup. This is always a pair of servers and you can survive a failure of one server. But with uh, Cassandra, you can say, okay, I, I want to be more robust. I want to, uh, to be able to survive uh, uh, two server failures. So, and then you need to just set up more nodes. And uh, this, this solution, in principle, it uh, scales uh, uh, without any limitations. So, okay, so Kia 1.4 is uh, coming up in uh, uh, May uh, 14th, maybe uh, plus or minus a couple of days. So we have improved the shared networks performance. Uh, we uh, did a couple tweaks in uh, uh, classification, also fixed uh, uh, statistics when you run multiple Kias connect, uh, con connected to the same database. And we uh, 
fixed and improved uh, lots of different things. There's over 100 tickets addressed. Okay, so it's also worth mentioning that <coughs> we're now working on uh, radius integration. <coughs> so uh, if, uh, if you want to, you can integrate your DHCP server with uh, uh, radius and uh, use it for different things, for access control, for, uh, uh, for uh, either uh, specific address uh, reservation or uh, classification that you say that uh, this uh, client belongs to a certain class and then it gets a uh, different type of service. Okay, and this is something that's uh, coming up in uh, maybe half a year. So we are working on a solution uh, or planning to uh, start the work in maybe six weeks uh, that will allow to store the whole configuration uh, in a database. So the idea is that uh, if you want to uh, spin up uh, uh, more servers, uh, you could have a centralized database that contains uh, all the configuration and also the state, the leases. Uh, and then uh, if you want more performance, you simply spin up uh, more uh, VMs with uh, the DHCP server. And uh, uh, finally, the last thing is that uh, uh, in 1.5, uh, we will develop uh, a Yank and uh, NetConf interface. So the idea is that uh, uh, with uh, Young model, uh, and by the way, this is something that uh, is uh, currently being worked on uh, uh, at uh, IETF, uh, so the DHC working group uh, uh, that I happen to be somewhat involved in. Uh, uh, we are working on uh, the Young model for DHCP v6, and uh, once that is done, we want we plan to extend this to uh, basically copy it and uh, reuse for DHCP 4 so, okay, and uh, with uh, the interface you can use all the tools and goodies that uh, allows you to uh, to work on uh, with uh, Yank model. Okay, so these are the useful links if you are interested. So that's pretty much it. So uh, any questions, suggestions, tomatoes? Thank you, Tomek. Uh, we do have time for maybe one or two questions if there are any. Nothing is, is the, the hope of beer making people hold those questions back. Yeah, and okay. I was Thank doing my best to not delay this. So. Thank you very much, Tomek. Thank you.